have the well, every session is always special. Just that today, the original guest that we had, so who, who you've been having as the announcement, in the announcement of who was going to present today, is um with that uh, couldn't make it because of some so, something sudden. But thank God is safe and well, and so we had to do a kind of a filling session. So today's session is formula showcased by Temida Yo Omoni and Ifani Yagwara and um, it will be more formula so the title is kind of straightforward anyway. So then juggling more people's yeah. strings. <laughs> so our for today we have um, uh, the sponsor we have for today there's going to be a prize award and uh, the prize is coming from Midna Tracy, uh, she's the principal at my online training hall. So she's going to give one lucky winner today a complete free access to our course. Uh, she's, I call her the queen of dashboard. So this is a very good opportunity for you to learn dashboard creation from one of the best. Okay. Then there is also us, so your PZ, we are the ever present sponsor <laughs> and then we run courses that you can key into so that you can boost your your skills okay so these are the courses coming up excel power bi and uh, you can always get in touch with us to say you're interested in uh, running i mean doing one of the trainings and this is also come later <laughs> So I'm going to hand over to Temida, who is the first presenter. There are two people, but she is going to take the first 30 minutes. So Temida, it's over to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Michael. So I'll share my screen now. Yes, please do. Oh. So I'm sharing my screen now. So is my screen visible? coming up yes now it is okay okay so let's start off so for today's section i'll be taking on date formula so the different kind of date formulas in excel so before we start i'll just show you some date formats so whenever you are doing a date format look let me just give you an instance let's say let me measure this one first measure this so let's say i want to write a formula i say today today in excel i close my bracket i press enter you can see today's date, right? So we want to do an instance where I want the date itself. Okay, now you can see today's date. Today is 12th of September 2021. This is the date formula. This is today's formula in Excel. What about if I want to like, okay, let me format this date in such a way that, okay. You can see for the D, the first D here stands for one. D, D stands for one. one. I'm using for January 1st, 1st of January 2021. The, the triple D stands for Friday. They gave you the, the short form of Friday. The 4D stands for Friday, that's a complete Friday. Just one M in the date format gives you one. That's one stands for January. Two MM gives you one, also one, or sometimes can be zero one. Triple, triple M gives you Gen, it gives you the short form of January. Four M gives you January, that's the full January itself. Also, you have one called Y. Y also represents year. So Y stands for 21, that's the year 2021, that's 21. Y, Y also the same thing, 21, triple Y, just the way it goes. So let's just, I'm not doing a format, okay. I want this to show in such a way that it's gonna show the days in full, the months in full and the year in full. So there's something they call text in Excel. That's a text function. So Excel is called a text, but in Power BI it's called a format. So I just say text, text from that same today, comma. The date format is, let's say, D, 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 uh, let me get the month and the year. Let's see now, this basically gives us, it gives us, it gave, it, it gives us, gives us, sorry, it gives us the day, the month and the year. Let me drag it so you can see better. So this is Sunday for today. Today is Sunday, right? So today is Sunday of September. 2021. Like, let me make the day come out so you can see the day from here. So let me come here. Let me put DD. 
So now yeah, it is better. So you can see down, you can see the day now showing Sunday. That's the 12th of Sunday, September 2021. Just just basically how the date format works. So you can just use text and date itself. So we can see this is how it works. So let's now do use it now for real life scenario, now real life progress and the rest. So let's start from let's go to the first sheet, which is called the work day. So most times there's something we use in, I don't know, most organizations use it a lot, big organization. Okay, don't like, okay, I'll go for I'm a vacation now. I want to like a 30 days vacation. I want to know when do my day, when does it start and when does it end? So I want to know the end date of my vacation. Let's say today nice, today is ninth of so today is 12th of September, right? I want to do I want to do a vacation like in the next 30 days. I want to know when my vacation will end. So I'm I'm applying for a vacation today. In the next 30 days, I want to know when my vacation will end. So it's going to end here. So there's something they call in Excel, they call it work day formula. It's called work day formula. So the it has it basically has three, it has three conditions. The first condition is the start date. The next condition is what days and the optional condition is holidays. So this one is just basically the number of holidays in the, in that year. So this one has to do with our calendar year in Nigeria. So the, what, what I do first, I have to get the amount of holidays in Nigeria. So I have to know all the holidays days in Nigeria. So I just go to my, my web browser. I'll go to one of my web browser now. Because I thought that this is my web browser, this um, being, I just search for a list of holidays in Nigeria. I just want to know the amount of holidays in Nigeria. So this is what I, this is what came out. So I just click on this link. Okay, let's look at it. Okay, yeah. So this is the link. So I just copied the URL from here. I copied the URL. I go back to the. I go back to the my Excel sheets. So I, I want to get my data now. So I say, go to data, go to get data from the web. Because what I'm doing is because I don't know all the holidays in Nigeria. I, I know we have um, January first is an holiday. I know December holiday. I know um, Workers Day. I know Independence Day. I don't really know all. So I have to go to internet and just get. So what I go is going there. You can always copy the holidays straight to your Excel. Just it's also more like web scraping in Excel. So it's going to load. It's loading. Why is it taking time? So this is the Power Query Navigator. It's loading. It's loading. Uh, it's taking time. It's taking time. Okay, let's just keep this. Actually, I've done it on my system before, so let me just cancel this since it's taking too much of time. So let me just get the dates. I need. I just need basically need the date. These are all the early days in Nigeria. Yeah. I just copy this. No, wait for it because uh, I think some people might would like to know how that. Okay, some people might like. Okay, okay. I'm looking at time and everything. That's okay. Let me go back again. Let me go to my data. Get data from the web. This basically this is what they call web scraping in Excel. So let me go back to the URL again. I'll get the URL from here. I'll paste the URL here. And I press OK. This has to be basic. You can use advanced, but let's use basic for now. Press OK. So now it is connecting me now to that website. This website is connecting. So it's going to open the Power Query Navigator. Yeah, OK. So it works. So you can see there's table one, there's table two. This table document shows the IPAR link, the element. If you're into HTML, HTML you know this uh, table, HTML codes, and the rest. But we need table two, table zero, sorry. So you can see this table now. You can see you can see the dates. These are the dates. These are the holidays. These are the holiday type. These are the um. Let me see. Okay, holiday comments. So we have to do some editing. Let me just drag this down a little bit so I can work better. So so when, if you want to edit your Power Query, they call it transform data. So I'm going to transform our data now. So we're transforming our data. It's loading. It's loading. Okay, yeah. So this this place and the call this place Power Query Editor in in Excel is also the same thing in Power BI. So let me just rename the table as um, holiday dates. Holiday dates. What I need, I basically need the dates. I can keep the holiday name. Okay, I I don't need this too. Basically, I don't need I don't need this too. So I just select this too. I remove the columns. So I have the two. Data. I have the dates and also have the holiday type now, right? So what else? I just close and load. So it's fetching me the data now. Okay. Yeah. So this is what I basically need now. So let me just copy this. I'll copy this. I'll put it inside my work day. Yeah. Because I I will need it for this. So let me just paste it here. 
let me drag this a little bit. Okay. So this is just basically what I need. So you can see, first of January 2021 was a um, new year. We we'll have the Good Friday, that's the Easter's and the rest. Workers' Day is May first, Salah and the rest. So these are all the holidays in Nigeria. So now, I want to like now what I want to do now. I want to, I want to apply for a vacation. Let's say for instance now, my name is Dayo, right? I work for your business. I want to apply for a 30 days vacation. Most of the time they call it leave, right? So I want to apply for a 30 days leave from today. The next 30 days. I want to what I want to, I want to know when the holiday will end. So what date will it end? So what I do now, I use the date from from I use the date function in Excel. So I say equals to work day. I say work day. So the first condition is what? Start date. So the start date is this. That's today. I press comma. The next condition is days. The amount of days. The amount of days I want to use now is 30 days, right? I press comma. The next step is what? Holiday. It's an optional statement. Holiday. That's the holidays in Nigeria itself. So I go, I come here. I say, okay, all the holidays now from Nigeria, from January 1st to um to box to boxing day, that's um December 28th. And I close my bracket and I press enter. So you can see it's giving me in a number format. I want it to be in a date format. So let me just select all of these first. Let me go to my home. Let me change it to date format. Let me use short date. So you can see now in the next from today now, in the next 30 days, the holiday in the next 30 days, if I, if I apply for a vacation today, in the next 30 days, my the end date will be what? Um, what do you call it? 25th of October 2021. So let's confirm if we're correct. And remember, there's something about work date. Work date, we don't count weekends. So we don't count um we don't count Saturdays and Sundays. So let's confirm if this is actually right. So let's come to my calendar here. Let me come to my calendar. So uh, okay, let me just come to my calendar. So from today now, let's say the next in the next um 30 days, right? So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, oh, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Oh, well, let's just do something shorter. So let's not waste our time. Let's do something shorter. This one, let's make something shorter. So I don't really want to waste time with this. Let's say, go start calculating dates and everything. Let's make, let me make this one um, in the next 10 days. This one will be better. Let's say in the next 10 days now. So let's say the same work day, right? Say work day. The start date is this. Okay. Let me do this first. One minute. Sorry, one minute. Let me make this one equals to today. Let's say 10 days from today, right? So let's say equals to work day. The start date is today, right? Comma. In how many days time? In the next 10 days, comma. Holidays. Now let's take all the holidays now from Nigeria. This is actually only Nigeria holiday. If you are doing for another country like um America, now America have different kind of holiday system. But this one is for holidays. This one is just basically holidays for Nigeria itself. So I close my bracket, I press enter. So now in the next 10 days, in the next 10 days, this holiday will be due in when that's um in the next 10 days to be due on the 20 on the 24th of September, right? So let's um let's now check if this is actually correct. Let's say this minus this. Let us know how many days. So 12 days. Do you know I'm showing 12 days? So let's look at the calendar now. In the next 10 days, right? So we're starting from Monday, so let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's twenty-fourth. So it came here twenty-four. You can see. So in the next ten days, it didn't. It didn't really count. The, remember, I said that when you're doing work days, you don't work days. Basically, weekends. That's your Saturdays and your Sundays are, are weekends in Nigeria. So work days now. It's we exclude. Always exclude your. Weekends. So it's going to exclude your Saturdays and your Sundays. So it's going to take only consideration your working days. That's from Monday to Friday. It's also going to exclude if there if there was an holiday between these dates. If you can see now we don't have any holiday for the month of September. That's why there's no break in the time. It's just only for the weekend. It's only counted it. So let's say I want to now format this. It will show in a time format. Like okay, I want to show it such a way that it will show me the year in full, the date and everything. So you can just come here 
I'll say that same, I'll do that same text. I remember I said text formatting your dates in Excel is called you use text format. But for in Power BI, it's, it's something you call format when you're writing your DAX function. So you'll say text, text from here, comma. So let's say I want, I want to show the year one, two, three, four. Also, and the months and the months. You can see now the team brought out okay, in the next 10 days from now, the holiday will stop at when 25th, 20, sorry, 24th, that's on, that's on February of, of September 2021. So you can always drag down. If you want to drag, then you can always drag down. And everything comes out. So you can see now with this, like, and okay, if I'm applying for a vacation now, in the next 30 days, I know it's going to finish. It's going to end this period of time. It's going to end this period of time. If I'm also applying, if let's take for instance this second step now, I'm applying for a, this is a project manager tax now. Let's say, okay, I'm giving a project manager tax. My boss gave me a, a project to do, and I said, okay, he wants this done in the next 10 days, excluding weekends. So he wants to exclude weekends from it. So I can always do this in the next. So in the next 10 days, excluding weekend. The job will be, should be completed on 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 24th of September 2021. That's the idea. But let me show on this one thing they call um something we call work date international. So I didn't show you that. So work date international basically means um international kind of date. You know, for Nigeria now we we we, we take our weekends as Saturdays and Sundays, right? But countries like um. Dubai, like Qatar now, they take most of them, they might take their weekends from Friday and Saturday. Sunday might be their work day. I don't really know much about, or we can check other countries. But I know some countries like Dubai, those Muslim countries, most of them they take their weekends from Friday. So most of them is Friday, Saturday. Sundays are work days for them. But for Nigeria, for Africa, yeah, most times ours, for the West African and Nigeria now, ours is Saturdays and Sunday. But countries like Qatar, Dubai, they might take their own weekends starting from Saturday, so it starts from Friday to, to, to Saturday. So let's just show you this one thing they call also, they call it Workday International. You can see Workday International here. So now this one also works in the same principle. So I say Workday International. The first step is what? The start date. So I start my date here, right? Comma. The second step is what? The number of days. So I click in the next 20 days, comma. The next step now is the weekend. So you can see now it's still showing me different kind of weekends. So I can see with this one, um, one is the weekend is for Saturday, Sunday. This one for Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Monday, Tuesday. I don't know if there's any country I do that weekend on Tuesday, Wednesday. But I know most times it's usually Saturday, Sunday, or Fridays. So let's do for Friday. Let's take um, countries like Qatar now. That's Friday, Saturday, right? That's seven. Come on. The holidays. So if I was going to do for Qatar now, I would have gone online to search for Qatar holidays. That's the holidays in Qatar or Dubai. Well, let us assume we're using for Nigerian holiday now. I'm using Nigerian holiday for Qatar. So I select all the holidays from here. I close my bracket. I press enter. So you can see now in the next 20 days, the holiday now will be due when? So it will end when? Um, on, the on the 25th of November 2021. So this is basically how the work day formula works in Excel. This is basically how it works in Excel. So let's go to the next one. They call it estimated days so it's only they call in Excel. they call it e date and eo months so e date means basically means estimated date so it gives you like it's mostly used by investors people that invest okay let's say i make i do an investment today now i pay a certain amount of money i want to know how long and how many months time my money yield so they come to something they call e date so it gives you the estimated days from that that same day you have this day you apply for it so you tell you in the next 30 days how long will it you when when will you that's just basically e date there's something called eu month so let me just show you how the e dates work first so i come here i say equals to e dates that's when i say it shows what the start date let's select the start date to be here comma in how many months time how many months i i, I don't put that so i put for zero that means that it's going to return the same date for me it's returning the same date for me right so let's say okay equals to e dates the start date is here, comma, in a many months time. So let's say in one month time. So if I make an investment now, okay, let, me, let me make this one today first. Let me say equals to today. 
Okay. Today's 12th of September. So I say equals to E date. I say the start date, which is 12th of, set, of September, comma. I want to know when my money will yield in the next one month. So this is the amount of months. So I say I select this and I close my bracket and I press enter. So in the next one month, the money will, yield, will be yielded on when? That's the 12th. 12th of October 2021. That's when the money will be used. So I can always drag down. If I don't to sorry, I will drag I will drag over here. I can always drag down so you can see where my money will be. If I say okay, from from this date here now, I say in the next five months, the money will be yielded when that's that's the 13th of February 2021. So there's something called EO month. EO month basically means end of month. That's end of month. So you can see this one here gives gives sorry, this one gives us the Estimated dates, the exact same dates. But you want to give us the end month. That gives us the end of month. So the when the month is going to basically end. So let's say equals to EO month. Equals to EO month. The start date, which is this, comma, the amount of months, which is this. I close my bracket. I press enter. Now see that means it's giving us the end of month. So for February now. So February basically is a leap, is a leap, it's usually a leap month, right? It's always 28. So let's say February is, February ends when the month of 28th of that's always 28th of February. That's when February ends. That it gives us the end of month. So if I drag down here now from here, if I drag down, you can see now. Um this month here, on the 9th of on the um sorry, today now, which is 12th of September 2021, in one month's time. For that is going to be 10th of October 2021. But for the EO month, EO month, that's end of month, it gives us what the end of month of October, which is what? 31st of October 20, 31st of October 2021. This one basically gives us so to understand better. Let me just change the text so you see how it basically works. Say um month. I'm just getting month, the day, and the year. Okay, that's cool. Let me make so I don't know the day. So you can see 31st. Let me see if I can drag this down. Okay, yeah, it worked. So you can see 31st of what? This 31st of October is it's actually a Sunday, 2021. Let me do the same thing for you. So so you can see you can understand what I'm trying to do better. Text the month comma. Day, comma. Let's say yeah. Let's say yeah. That's very wrong. Okay, let me drag down. I know I'm always over dragging. So you can see now. Look at this now. So if I say okay, from today now. From today is um twelve right, twelve of september 2021 if i say in the next one month time if i'm, if I'm making an investment if i say in the next one month time i know that okay if i'm using e dates now it's giving me the estimated date in the next one month so i know that in, in one month time that's in 30, in 30 days or 31 days my money will be it, it, it basically going to yield on the 12th of october 2021 if i'm doing an eo month that's end of month so the end of month in the next one month is going to be your money is going to yield on the 31st so it's going to give you the end month for October 2021. So that means that means your money is going to mature in uh, on the date of 31st of October, which is on a Sunday 2021. So that's basically how it works. So then I'm going to another one called the net work days. So basically, net work days basically gives you the work, the amount of working days you have to work. So let's do it now. So if I say okay, I want to apply for a holiday or something today and the day is meant to end when it's meant to end on the 4th of October. So I want to know the amount of days I'm going to work, excluding both my weekends and my public holidays. So I do equals to net work days. I see the first condition, the first criteria is what start date, which is this, comma, the end date, which is also this, comma, is also asking for the holidays. So the holidays are the holidays here, yeah? all the holidays we have in Nigeria. Close bracket, press enter. So you can see that I'm going to work for the next 15 days, basically. So let's check if it's correct. Let's say the end date minus the start date. 
this showing 21. Why is it showing 21? Because it's also, uh, uh, also excluding weekends. So if we remove weekends from here, it basically will drop to 15. Basically, that's actually the idea behind it. So if we drag down, you can drag down from here. And see, these are all the days, all the all the amount of working days you're going to work. So if I say I'm applying for an holiday or a vacation in this day, in this particular day, and okay, I say, okay, my boss tell me that okay, my this thing will end, my holiday is basically going to end on the 4th of October. I know that that means I'm going to work for basically 15 days. So I have working days of only 15 days to work. So basically, that's how the idea works. So you can also do apply for so many scenarios, so many scenarios. So basically, that's how it works. So from the from the um from the text function it basically gives you how you can format your date so different kind of dates you want so you can like okay i want to format my date such a way that i get the days which is sunday the number of days the month and the year you can always use the text function that's basically how it works for this just first your equals to with your text function so you can put your value that's the date you can also format it with your text function that's how it works so that just basically, the idea is basically just going for so many scenarios, so many scenarios, so many scenarios. That's how it works. So I'm done for it now. So Michael. Okay. Hello, great. Michael. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Done. So good. Uh, someone has a question. Okay, uh, let me check. That's your handle. Hey, um, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, please, I want to ask. Is this only applicable to Office 365 or is it applicable to Office 2019? Uh, is in all, uh, all, at least I've been seeing it since 2007. Are you using it for my 2016? So it's applicable for all. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know when they added it in all the version most of us use. You can try to assist it. Just put your. I mean, when I I used I used it for my 2010. Just put your equals to. You can always write your formulas, work day. People like if you're applying for holiday, vacation, just basically that's like for my work. So I can see Frank and up. He's the one who just finished asking. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, done. I'm that's... done. Okay, okay. Right, so yeah, I'll start moving to the next presenter. I'll stop sharing my screen now. Okay, you can. Okay. And maybe just to give a small. Uh, addition to what you did. Uh, one very common use that I and many people I know are for this uh, date stuff is, let me show you one. If you have ever had a case where you have dates and you need to extract year, you need to extract month, month. You need to extract day, day. Day. either you want to extract the and sometimes you need to extract maybe year month in the format like this. That works nicely. For me, the text formula, I started using it in year 2011 when I was working in a report that we needed to automate the dashboards. And automating dashboard involves we saying, okay, for this day, which is like first of September 2018, we made so so money. I will show you how we did, but anyway, just so that I use two minutes and I'll move on to the next one. So here yeah, is simply just why why why. So they are making the language. Anyway, this is here. This is this will be months. So depending on how you want the month, do you want it in text? Do you want it in number? If you want it in number one letter, that's that's nine. If you want it two letters, zero nine because we're in, we're in September. If you want it in three letters, then that's set. Maybe I want it in three letters, or I want it in four letters. You can always pick. I want my name. Uh, four is like the full name anyway, not for the full name. So this is okay. The pattern is day, month before year. And day, again, okay, you are able to specify how you want the day. You want it in two letters, and that's nice. 
comes that way. A month here becomes like text, piece, or year month now. Uh, let's say month here, space. It is how I want it. So it shows Jan 2021. So it's a very, very useful formula. So the that dashboard I was talking about, we used to say, okay, equal to last year's last. My data used to come up, come up on the yesterday. So yesterday's. The new for obviously the then the date and then it becomes D for the day, comma how many the full name of the date and then the Month, year, is, and I just link it to where the result is. So I already have a formula somewhere that will be giving this, and so this always change every day. We even put the naira sign sometimes. So this will be in a different shape, blah, blah. but the key thing is it's very useful. So that's the end. Let me quickly bring up the yeah, Kim's hand is up. Uh, is your question short? Because I'm supposed to think yes. of this. Okay. It's very yeah. short. All right. Sir. And, yeah, I said in a case that you have a, a date and a time together, you want to exact date out of a date and time. How do we do it? Okay. So, you have a date and a... I have date and time. Use yes. the noun function, okay. okay. I want to extract just the date out of it. Integer, just the int, keep the date, the date and time. That's it. So it cuts off the time. And you can specify that it's just the time for that to show. I mean, it cuts here, yeah, it shows it should be time. But if you don't do it and you do just dates, yeah, if you go here and you pick date format, depending on you, uh, this will show like dates, but it's not dates anymore. It's not really dates, it's date and time. Let me tell you why. If I write today's dates here now, today, which we all know is this. If I ask it a question, is this one equal to this? It will say no, because they are not equal. This one has a time in it, but the one that I do integer to so it, it knows that they are the same. So if you have a date and time, and you genuinely want to extract just the, the date, integer is the answer. So that integer cuts off the time because in Excel, one is a day. So when you say 1.5, that's one day, 12 hours. So by the time you cut off anything that is fractional, you're always ending up with just the date part. So at this point, I'm going to bring up. Yeah, thank you. So if I is the next presenter and he too is planning to showcase some uh, formulas to us in the next say 30 minutes. So yeah, if I uh Jay, um, hello. Yeah. Okay. So my screen now. Yes, the screen is okay. Um, okay, so today I was going to showcase. Okay, so, okay, I was just going to show um some of the formulas, like the small formula, the large formula, and as you say, be different from the max and main formula. Then I also show the rank formula. Then after we do that, I'll also show about the offset formula. Then I'll move on to how you guys offset formula to. Okay, I think I'll be later what I want to do. Okay, there's a guys of office formula to do some. There's a sliding kind of way. So I was just do that. So let me just quickly show about the small large. 
the max and mean formula and how they're so different. Okay, so at the moment, because the list of names here. Okay, so we're going to use the max formula to, and I'll show you the difference between the max, the mean, the large, and the small. So here, we have this, this. So if the the max formula, is, and I think most of you already know it, is to get the um the largest number from a list of array. So this, but most time maybe you want to use a formula that maybe you want to pick the largest, maybe top three, the top four, the top five, and so that's where the large formula will come in. So if you want to do something like getting the large distance, so use the large formula. You pick the list and then you give it the number you want. So as you only get the top one. If you want to get the top three, you so it's often most of the time maybe sorting your data set or sorting the data. So before you can get the large three, you can use make use of the large formula and also make use of <laughs> the Max got mixed up the large formula. So the same thing applies to the to the small formula. So that's just equals to small. You pick the array and you want to find maybe the, the lowest. So that'll be one if you are going to find the lowest. If you are going to find the second to the lowest, then this this one, which is the K here, you may first with a two. Okay, that's two with the same. same. Right. So this will now make me move on to the rank formula. So the rank formula is also a bit similar to the large and the small formula, but it's, it's a way for you to return, to give, to rank something so you get the index of it written here. Instead of getting the values of, instead of getting the value that's actually the smallest, just to get the rank, it's rank in the list of the item. So you do equals to rank, you click on it. Number first. Then give it the reference, which is the list. And they give it the order. I said, you know, this is order. You're looking for it in a descending order. I press OK. So this is top one, this is top two, this is top three. OK, now this wrong because we didn't lock this. So that's it. All right. So after this, I'll move to the offset formula. How to use offset. So let's say this are list of our sales reps. And then these are. We want to make use so I'm introduced to the offset formula right now. Once you do it in a way that yo Um, yeah, we'll look at. So, once you 
type an index here or I want to give one of the indices here and what we give the index we want to to give us the name of the person and the earnings. That's what we want to do. So we're going to use, come here to do the offset formula. So yeah, you just do equals to offset. Then it asks you for the reference which you're going to use. So we'll start with B1. Sorry, A1. Then it gives us the role. So in the offset formula, what do you mean by the role is? Um, I'm, like how many rows would you want this formula to move to give you the value you want? So we can say wants it to move by whatever we specify. Yeah. Then I ask us for the column. So we'll say wants to move just by zero column. And then you can close the brackets. We can also apply the same thing here again with the offset formula using offset once we want to begin the errands in And how many rows would we want it to move by? Just this. Then once it does move by zero. So that's one of the ways of use the offset formula. So um I don't know, is there does everybody understand so far the offset formula? Hello. No, no questions. So, okay, help me to ask a question. Yeah, help me to answer something. Okay. Um, good afternoon, if I. Good afternoon, Michael. Good yeah. afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I, I think I had some issues with my network. Uh, I don't know if you can please just do one example again. Just the offset. Okay. Did the offset from the... Yes. Thank you. Okay, so um, these are sales reps here. These are the earnings. Once we make it in the way that we we'll would type in whatever we we'll put it, we we'll give it an an ID number, which are this. It will return maybe that is salesperson's name for now. So let's say for now we we'll give it um maybe one two or one five. So we'll do equals to offset. So here is equals to offset. It asks us for the reference. So what cell are we referencing? We can reference we can just start from referencing the the sales column or in the sales, then it has like all the column. What do you mean by role is how many roles should it move to give us the number or to give us like to give us out the value we want. So we want to move by whatever rule we whatever rule we specify here. Because the future rule is basically going to give us its name. The was for the column. How many columns should we reference? So if maybe in this beginning reference we referenced maybe the ID, we'll tell it we're well, going to the column here is going to be zero. It will be one and not zero which i'm going to keep now because once to move by one column and for the item the width there are optional so default will be one one so put enter and give it enter so it gives us the fifth name here so if we come and change the id number to a different number it gives us the number based on there was well, that based on okay okay Okay, yeah, it's on the now. Thank you. Okay. So I'll use the offset um, formula to make kind of like a um, desktop summary. 
what I'm going to do. So here I build um so yeah, this is basically uh, the times table. As you can see, these are your like one times one will give you this, whatever number you multiply by, whatever is up, whatever is here. Now, whatever number is here, it will give you the corresponding value. Okay. Um, okay, let me just do this one. Good. So this is our data. So now this. So yeah, once. Um, what I'm trying to do is, um, I want to wait out. I would maybe kind of like a summary of this. I don't. I don't have everything I'm seeing on this table maybe because it's much larger. I just want to wait to slide and. Whatever I'm saying, it changes as I move up or down, kind of like a web browser kind of thing. So yeah, it does do equals to. So I'm just going to reference the first data here. Yeah, I'll give it the digits which I want it to be. Yeah, yes, it could be. What do I number out here? First one. And I can drag this up to. Use the top 15. Okay. Then also come here and I'll go to keep a zero for now because I want to use the offset formula. Okay, so what I'll do here now. So the rule I'm going to use here is going to be whatever number that is set here plus whatever number that is also set here. Then my column. So that what I'm trying to do is that if I come here and I change this to a different number, it moves, it shows me the next value that you're seeing here. Okay, so now I put this back at one. Okay. Then I also drag. Well, since I only wanted to move up here, this one, and I lock my B. Okay, so this basically gives me up to the system. So this was the time table, which is there. Let's copy this. So I'll do the same thing over here. This um, is what I did. So I come here to. Okay, so. Is there? I want it to be equal to any first digit here.
Whatever is equals to whatever is here plus one. And I also want to give the first ten. So the same thing like I did the other time, I also use the offset formula here. And then also lock this cell. Yeah, I wouldn't lock it by um I wouldn't like it by column, right? I would lock it by rows. So just this. You can need three rows before the offset you type. Ask uh, so that people are not lost because me too. I'm guessing maybe. Uh, what's the what? Yeah, uh, I did it once. Yeah, but it seems like I thought I saved it, but it seems I deleted the sheet, so I couldn't show the or uh, how I put it, the aftermath or the after look of how it's exactly supposed to look like. How exactly, you're supposed to get. I don't know. Is that what's the full line? Yes, they are. We just were all looking at what they are going for. What are going for? Okay. So this will be equals to, let's say, again, you go back to the data sheet and I keep this. So I want to do it for inside right now. Just this. Then the
Okay. So if I change this to three, you guess like it just kind of moves like I'm kind of strolling. That's the idea behind what I'm trying to do. Um, uh, so what's the following? Okay, so now if you go to your developer tab, yes, if it does. Yeah, so if you have the developer tab on your, it's not on your, on the ribbons, I go to options and you go to customer's ribbons and you just take care or you check it in. Okay. Okay, so now, okay. Okay, so I'm going to go to the insert of my developer tab and I'm going to set a scope bar. Yes. Code the scope bar here. So the scope bar here. Okay, so then this scroll bar, I'm going to format this. And in the format, I'm going to link it to this sheet to which I change in about to. And let's give it an OK. Okay, so as I'm changing, okay, here is zero because, yeah, I did that 21. If I continue to formula, it should. I should get everything. Then I'll do the same thing here from control, but I'll link it to the cell A5. I press OK now. So as I'm moving down, this one moves. Then it's a column. It's up here. So everything that's there from the very first number to the twenty fifth twenty first number and everything in our column for the very first rule to the thirty first number on the thirty two rule of or be summarized into this shit. So does it? Is that the last one? I'm saying. That's the. Well, you can keep going down, but it's going to stop at twenty first because I didn't. Okay. Increase the number. End of the things you have planned, right? Yeah, the last thing I was going to do was text formula, but you already gone over the text formula and the substitute formula. Okay. 
So just don't ask any questions from anyone in the house. Then. It's probably going to be or any comment or anything. Any question, any comment, any Okay, so in that case, uh, we've uh, come to the session where we need to pick the lucky winner for today's gift, uh, for today's giveaway. So let's see. Screen. So today we did, uh, we like to say we did two different, um, two different, yeah, text formulas and stuff related to offsets. So I'm going to ask a question, and uh, it's going to be the first person to answer. So for this case, to make it transparent to George, your answer should be into the, the text box. So that's how we're going to judge. The first answer we see in the text box that is correct is what we are is who we are picking as the winner. So that way. There is not going to be any any con contest about oh I said it but I did voice or I was raising my hand you didn't see me on time. So it's just be plainly based on um, the answer we see in the text box. But what was the price? So let's even see if it's something you're interested in before you. you the price is only one person because that's who that's what the sponsor has made us know that the for one person the slot and the it's about access to the to my online training of dashboard course. Okay, so by Midna Tracy. So that's the price we a course by Midna Tracy Excel dashboard. Alright, so this is the question. Okay. So the if I uh, let's see when most people were already in this session. So that I'll pick a question that everybody was around when the speakers mentioned. Okay, great. So very straightforward. Uh, I am buying a so I'm buying buying a house or whatever it is you are buying, right? So this house that you buy, you are going to pay, you are paying 60 million now, right? But you will be getting rental income. So you are paying 60 million now, you bought it on the 12th of September, 2021. You'll be getting rental income. So you'll be getting rental income at specific dates, okay? So you'll be collecting rental income of six million every year. Okay. So the rental incomes are going to kick off. So the first one is going to come in. The first one is going to come in exactly 15 months, right? Exactly 15 months from today that you made that purchase. So I want somebody to tell us what formula is going to be inside here that will get me the answer. So exactly 15 months from this date that we are buying this property, okay? I'm going to get 6 million era rental income. Can you do the formula from what we have done today that will get me you know what the date will be exactly 15 months from now. So we're going to let me go to where the answer will pop up. Or where uh, not just the uh, the name of the formula now, it will be if you can write it out in full, like okay, how it will be. So let's say this cell, this cell is a cell C3. So in case you need the cell number, and this one is cell uh, what now? Cell A6. So C3 and A6. I uh, can use the um, arrow to draw it. 
and you just draw it once and for all. So this is cell C4, and this is a A6. A all right. Okay. So let's test out the answers we have gotten. I'm going to come in here. Uh, so to be sincere, the one I'm going to, because remember what we said, that you give me the formula as it should be. Okay. Yeah, someone did say he did, but didn't give me the full thing. So this will not give me the answer. Another person said today, right? But there's something wrong about today. The thing is that the formula should be, that's why it gave us this date. Should be what it is here. But anyway, let me try. Another person said E date and C4, C4 comma A says C3, I'm looking at the time, C3 comma A6. Although he has made a correction, C4 comma A6. Okay, so it seems both of you are coming to the same answer, so it's not a matter of who said it first. We need to go here and make it come up as date. So it says you're going to get your first rental income on the 12th of December. All right, uh, is it going to be a close one? But since I've said the first answer on the, in, this, in the chat box, so that means it goes to Mr. Bijar. Like, it would be nice to give also Mr. Kim. Maybe we'll give the both of you. Uh, but we'll give you different things because uh, the sponsor already gave us one, so internally we'll give Mr. Kim something else, so at least he tried the answer like multiple times, and if not for technicality, we will have gotten it the first one too. So, uh, Mr. Mijab, Mr. Kim, we need you to please just, uh, we need your email, name and email, so please uh, send your name and email to I'm typing it to webinar at your bz.com so if you send it to webinar at your uh, that's all we need we're going to kick off the process okay so thank you very very much and congratulations for winning our giveaway today uh, for Mr. Mijab it will be the Bigna course for Mr. Kim, it will be a course from us. So uh, we'll communicate them to you. Lastly, please help us with feedback. What you like, what can be improved on. We will be happy to get your feedback. So please share with us your feedback so that we can improve. And uh, with this, we have come to the end of today's session. And the such the what we were supposed to have before now, you know, that was originally for today, will still happen. So the speaker had some flooding issues due to hurricane Ida in the US, so he's needing to shift. And uh, we will communicate with us to us new date. But thank you very, very much. Keep following us up, keep uh, joining us every every Saturday Sunday. And don't forget to let me show you the sessions we have coming up soon. Uh, by 6 p.m. we have Power BI. Let me just pull up my screen again. So you should, I would say you should join it because the presentation is something that I feel everybody should be aware of. It's not, uh, it's something that I want you get to see it, you will see that it's valuable, but it doesn't come to you by you just, you, someone needs to show you. Those are, these are some of the things someone needs to show you before you know it. Not the kind of thing that you can figure out yourself easily. So I will say, join this session, cohort analysis, Power BI, 
cohort analysis. It's very useful for companies where you are you care about returning customers, right? You want to see how well your my your marketing or your customer retention. So this is like the other side of churn analysis. You know, as important as churn analysis is, this is if you ask me, this is becoming even way more important. So you want to be part of the session, right? So see you uh, by six o'clock then. And thanks to everyone who has joined today's session. And uh, have a very wonderful week ahead. So I'm going to close the session right now. Bye, guys. Okay, bye. Please fill our feedback form so that we know where we are doing. We get your opinions. Okay, so bye. Bye, bye, guys.